Stay tuned for your weekly news review on STVS. Welcome to the News Review in English. I'm your presenter, Dakota Simpson. Our first item for review this evening is that the officers of the police force of Suriname KPS, who are members of the police union, are dissatisfied with the work of the union. At the General Assembly on Friday, June 18th, they expressed their dissatisfaction. This meeting had been postponed five times. The police union members are discouraged because they want to be better appreciated. What also bothers them are the transfers that often occurs without notifying the employees. Another sore point of the police is the overtime policy which is carried out by the government and not by the police organization itself. President of the Police Union, Robbie Ramjiwan, says that members have submitted a motion in order to bring about a change. The police officers also waited for two years for the implementation of the housing project in Fredenberg, Pepperpot, and Houghton. They are also dissatisfied with the promotions within the force, which they believe are long overdue. According to Ramjiawan, the papers for promotions are already sent to the Minister Edward Belfort of Justice and Police, but the Minister is claiming the opposite. In an interview earlier this week, the Minister indicated that he hasn't received any submissions for any pr pr promotions. More than 200 recruits are also waiting for promotions to become junior police officers since last year December. Another item for review is that on Thursday, July 17, the traditional authorities from the Upper Suriname region officially informed the government about the death, uh, the death of Grangmang or Chief of the Saramakanas, Belvon Aboykoni. This happened in the cabinet of the President, Daisy Botasa. Advisor of the Council of Ministries, Jules Waden-Bosk received the delegation on behalf of the head of the state. The Minister of Regional Development, Stanley Bettison, was present at the time of their visit. Chief Captain of the area, Albert Aboykoni, indicated that there is still no date planned for the funeral because the tribal leader must determine that within the next three months. According to tradition, Amarun Grangmon should only be buried three months after his death. Both Minister Bettison and Mr. Wadenbosk promised that the government would contribute to the funeral. During the visit, the budget of the funeral was also discussed. Grangmon Belvon Aboykoni passed away on June 24 at his home in Paramaribo. The body of the deceased Grand Mang is laid out in his residence in Asidon Hopo. And in other news, Suriname now has an official traffic safety month. August 15 to September 15 is the period that was legally determined by the Minister of Justice and Police, Edward Belfort, to demand responsible behavior in traffic. This document was adopted last month by the Minister. Director of the Ministry, Ines Huizen Sedney, shared this on Thursday, July 17. The Education Department of the Ministry of Justice and Police had a briefing about the safety month on Thursday, July 17, with different organizations, companies, and other stakeholders. They were given the opportunity to present proposals in this regard. The Ministry will run the project with Helmut Gesius, President of the Traffic Volunteers Corps. Gesius said that this year they will focus on traffic in a different way. The safety month will, form, will be formally started with an announcement on August 15 by Minister Edward Belfort. Another item for review this evening is that Stats Oli is finally looking for oil off the coast of Saramaka. It is the first time that Statsoli will drill wells at sea. The area is described as Block 4 and is 1,200 square meters. 
The more you go towards the coast, the greater the likelihood of finding more oil deposits compared to drilling on land, says Wim Dwakar Singh, director of Paradise Oil Company. Dwakar Singh is optimistic about the results of the drilling. Start solely as a corporation project for drilling signed with Well Service Petroleum Company Limited of Trinidad and Tobago. Charles Brash, chairman of the Well Service Petroleum Company, says that Suriname is not an unknown territory for them. Minister Jim Hawk of Natural Resources is also looking forward to the results of the drilling off the coast. Mr. Hawk says that it is time that Statsoli has taken its, this step. With this step of exploration drilling offshore, Statsoli indicated that it is now closer to its goal of increasing oil reserves. And in other news, at the press center of the president's office on Friday, July 18th, the press was informed about the recent BRICS conference that was held on July 16 in Brazil. Prior to the press conference, President Desiree Bautista gave his condolences to the relatives of the victims of the crash Malaysian airplane. During the BRICS South America conference, some good results were achieved from which Suriname as a Caribbean country will benefit. At the meeting, it was decided that South American and Caribbean countries should be informed about the results. The head of state stressed that Suriname should make use of the enormous opportunities that will be created. Furthermore, it was also decided that another foreign currency should be used to counter the US dollar, which is used as an anchor for the economy. Another item being reviewed this evening is that Roosevelt Gold Mines NV has a significantly lower net profit in 2013 when compared to 2012. The profit was for 2013 57.3 million US dollars, but in 2012 it was 210.9 million US dollars. The company indicated that gold prices in 2013 has been below $1,500 per ounce. The price of gold has shown a downward trend for a while now. On Saturday, July 19th, at the General Assembly, these figures were presented to the Vice President Robert Amirali and Minister Jim Hawk of Natural Resources. Tom Erling, General Manager and CEO of I Am Gold, indicated that for 2014, no fat net profit is to be expected. The Minister of Natural Resources indicated that the mega profits are not only due to falling gold prices. And in other news, last Monday, the Rumors Foundation officially opened the UC Amelia Family Coaching Unit. Family coaching will yield greater returns for families and Suriname, says Rumors Director Emmy Hart. The opening was done by the Speaker of Parliament, Jennifer Gerling Simmons, in her capacity as Chairwoman of Parliament for Children and Teens. She's very happy with this organization because the boys can count on a better future. She called on them to make their own contribution to their own development. Prashant Lutawan is one of the pupils of the Rumas Foundation and has successfully completed the behavior training. Prashant is also happy that his mother will be coached by the foundation. The Rumas Foundation had previously opened a development center and a motivation center. Next month, it is celebrating its fifth anniversary. The foundation has successfully rehabilitated more than 400 boys and has facilitated their reintroduction to society. Other news reports show that the summer vacation is on its way. Preparations related to the safety of the vacation resorts are in full swing. This period is the busiest period for the resorts. In this context, the district commissioner convened with managers of the resorts in the district of Para to brainstorm about the safety of the visitors. 
each approved resort will receive a certificate and be provided with service numbers for emergencies. The DC, along with BOG, KBS, and KPS, will pay special attention to the aspects of safety, environment, and the use of alcohol in para. No liquor should be consumed at resorts in para. To enhance food safety, regular checks will be carried out in the kitchens of resorts. Furthermore, places with swimming accommodation are required to have markings in the water to indicate the depth. The police force of Suriname, KPS, will, like last year, perform safety checks on places unannounced. In connection with the launching of the health project, Para Health Promotion Tour, an alcohol-free day will also be introduced. On that day, no alcohol should be used or consumed at resorts in Para. Another item selected for review is that next year, the National Army NL will have its own museum. This will be realized if all goes according to plan, says August Bohe, Sergeant First Class in charge of the museum to be established. The commander of the First National Army was Colonel Ingwe Elstak. He served in that position from 1975 to 1980. A portrait of him will be the first to be placed in the museum, then that of the other commanders will follow. In concluding our review this evening, Minister of Education Ashwin Adin is considering another approach for the School Ready Kids project. A working group was set up last Tuesday to brainstorm about this. For the school year 2014-2015, the ministry will facilitate early influx through to regular kindergarten. Toddlers who will reach the age of four by January to March 2015, accompanied by their parents or guardians, were signed up for the screening. However, the project was forced to reduce the number of enrollments due to limited spaces in kindergarten. The registration for the city and the districts were from June 22 to July 24, 2014. Thank you for watching. Until next week when my colleague Susan Maynard will present. I'm Dakota Simpson, your presenter, wishing you a pleasant evening.